Most people think that the people that are professional Madden players are superior in knowledge and they just are just that much better than the rest of the competition. But in reality, most of the best players in Madden only do a couple of things differently um, than average players. And in today's video, we're going to be taking a look at some of those things. What's up, guys? My name is Cody, and if this is your first time coming across any of my content, I just want to encourage you to stick around and watch the entire video all the way through. And then at the end, if you could do me a favor, I'd like to meet you in the comments. So just leave a comment, and I'd really like to kind of connect with you in the comments. But anyways, guys, today's video is all about um, what can we glean? What are some insights of Madden that we can learn from the best players in the game? And there's a couple of patterns, and I boiled it down to about three things that they do that we, most average players, don't do. Here's the first one. The first one is that they have a clear, concise plan that they actually follow, okay, that they actually follow. This is critical. This is one of the number one things that I think you could do right now to help yourself get better. Here's essentially what you'll see a lot of the top tier, a lot of the better players do, is they run the same formation all game. They do. Most of them will run the same exact formation all game or the majority of the game. Okay, Either 90% of the game or more, they will run one formation. The reason they do that is because it's very difficult to guard a someone who runs one formation because you can't tell what they're going to do. Everything looks exactly the same. This is one thing that they do, and it disguises it. And it does a really good job. Trust me, I've played against some of the better players in the game. And the most difficult part that I've ever feel like I've faced is not necessarily the specific play that they're using, but it's the fact that they are mixing up not just one play, but two plays and three plays. And this is kind of at the crux of what I try to teach is you want to run one formation. You want to have a very clear plan in that you know exactly what you're going to do. There's not a whole lot of uncertainty. Okay. Most of those players, they're not going to play. They're not going to run a play that they haven't practiced at some point. Okay, they're not. They're just not going to do it. So again, that's critical. You want to practice your plays. You want to run only the plays that you practiced. That is something that is just so so critical to your success in this year's game, and really, you know, beyond this year's game, in my opinion. Um, this is something that can help you out every year or every year, and this is something that the pro players consistently do. Um, better than the average players okay this uh, the second thing that I wanted to hit on that that pro players do that average players kind of tend to struggle with is pro players uh, the people that are the best in the game they know how to get back in the game when all seems lost okay when all seems lost so what they do better than me better than most average players is they keep their composure um, you don't see rattled. They don't, they don't seem rattled. You always see them able to make, uh, you know, adjustment after adjustment after adjustment after adjustment. So, again, this is just one thing that uh, pro players do that average players tend not to do is they get flustered really quickly. And, and then the last thing that I wanted to encourage you with is the last thing that I would say, if you really looked at all the pro players and you could boil it down to three things, what are the three things that they do? The first thing that they do better is that they have a very specific plan and they don't run plays they haven't practiced. And that's really, really critical for success. The um, the other thing that they do, and really the, probably the most important thing that they do, is um, they, uh, they don't get rattled. They keep their composure. You'll see them go through highs and lows. There's people that have come down from two possessions, um, down 11 points with like two minutes left in a game of Madden, which is very, very difficult to do, um, especially when you think about the fact that it's a computer game. So the players are always going to play the right technique. Um, that's very difficult, very, very difficult to do. And there's people that have done it. There's also, and then the last one that I want to encourage you with, and this is this is probably the one uh, more than anything that I think this is really something that can help your game if you could figure out how to apply this principle. The third thing that professional players do, the professional Madden players do, is they play the game within the game. Okay, so to me, there's always a game within the game. And what I mean by that is there is a mental battle going on every single game, uh, every single snap of every single game. And what it really amounts to and boils down to is the people that are really, really special, the people that are really, really, really good at Madden, what they do more than anything else is they are able to basically, whenever 
um, someone comes out in the same formation all game or if they whatever they do, they're able to do certain things. They'll take away certain routes at certain times um, that they wouldn't take away other, otherwise. And I call this the game within the game. What it really boils down to is having the awareness, having the savvy to to kind of know what the offense is going to run and take it away. And then also at times know what they're going to run and give it to them. Okay, know what they're going to run and give it to them so that you can take it away later. Um, you know, knowing when someone's going to go to verticals out of trips versus when they're going to go to inside zone. These are tendencies. These are little things that you pick up on if you watch. If you notice, um, pro players will certainly, there's times where they won't blitz anybody. And then there's times where they'll blitz everybody. Having that, um, knowing that kind of awareness of the game, that little tact, and I call it the game within the game, um, in which... You'll see them audible, they'll flip the play or, you know, different things like that. Those are things that are very difficult to master. That's probably the last thing that I would suggest out of these three things of you trying to tackle. But in my opinion, it's probably the most important thing that you can tackle. And what I would suggest you do is learn how to use one formation first. Then I would encourage you to continually work on your composure, staying composed throughout the course of a game. And then the fourth or the, the third thing that I want you to do, the last step in the progression is can you train yourself to use certain plays at certain times as opposed to uh, just using it whenever, okay? Just using it whenever. So, for example, I'm not going to call Z-Spot every, every play. What I'm going to do is I'm going to run PA post, PA post, PA post. I'll probably run it, you know, seven times, and then I'll run Z-Spot, okay? Something like that. Maybe you blitz left, blitz left, blitz left, and then all of a sudden you blitz right. Mixing up different play calls but knowing when to do it that is the true mark of a masterful play caller um, and something that, in my opinion, is very, very difficult to master. But if you can master it, it can really help you get better in the game. So anyways, guys, I want to thank you for watching today's video. If you're new to the channel or if you haven't subscribed to my YouTube videos, I want to just encourage you hit the subscribe button below. And uh, that way you can get access to all of my content for Madden 18. Thank you for watching. And if you have any questions, please leave.